Um, well, th thanks, Tim. Um, in this short presentation, what I want to do really is use the Ignite style of presentation, which Paul Harvin pointed me in the direction of, to try and provoke some thinking about the challenges that we face in planning for and delivering long-term change, whether that's in relation to delivering the type of low energy uh, revolution which Alistair has been talking about, or adapting to the impacts of climate change on the coast. And I want to share with you a story about societal response in the face of environmental risk. The starting point is Belize in Central America, which I visited as an undergraduate geography student over 40 years ago, um, as the country was recovering uh, from the impact of Hurricane Hattie, which devastated the principal settlement of Belize City, which occupies a low-lying mangrove fringed coast protected from Caribbean storms by the world's second longest barrier reef. Um, I, uh, sorry, there is the second longest barrier reef. It's a tough assignment, I have to say. Um, <laughs> uh, um, and at that time, having recovered from Hurricane Hattie, the fledgling independent government, still operating under British colonial power, took the decision to move the administrative capital of the city 40 miles inland to a greenfield site that is now Belmapan, the world's smallest capital city. From the outset, uh, this project was dogged by indecision and delay and bedeviled by poor planning and execution, with the result that the population some uh, 40 years later has grown to little more than 15,000, substantially as a result of the uh, uh, influx of refugees. Um, meantime, Belize City, which you see here, has been reconstructed and grown to around 80,000 population. But the environmental risk hasn't gone away, as we discovered when I took a group of students back last summer. Hurricanes come and go, and fluvial and coastal flooding is a frequent event, affecting the poorer sections of society in the lower-lying parts of the town. So a new master plan for Belize City is in preparation, with the preferred strategy being to upgrade the infrastructure of the historic core of the city, densify and flood-proof development, whilst at the same time developing the per peripheral settlements to accommodate continued growth in less vulnerable locations. So in Belize, planning has tried to respond to an all-too-present environmental risk with varying degrees of success. Intertwined political and business interests have delivered top-down solutions, although their ability to implement them have been significantly impacted by strong allegiance to culture and place, Belize City being the heartland of the country's Afro-Caribbean community. <clears throat> so where does Babacom come in? Um, a walk along the coast shortly after returning from Belize confronted me with the extent to which the coast holds a powerful attraction as a place to live despite <coughs> the clear risks. Indeed, research by real estate agents Knight Frank, oh, sorry, who clearly have a vested interest um, in talking up these things, points to the premium which people will pay for the benefit of living at the edge. It's notable, however, that the period of house sales takes place in the summer when buyers are attracted by the coastal idyll at a point when the perception of environmental risk recedes. But the recent storms have reminded us of the risk to both homes and infrastructure. Whether the extremes of last winter were a one-off event or a harbinger of more intense weather we will experience with climate change, it's clear that we need to respond. But our system of planning and decision make is our system of planning and decision making up to the task. Having, ident having examined the Dawlish neighbourhood plan two years ago as an independent examiner, there was scarcely a mention of coastal flooding risk and certainly no policies to address it. So bottom-up planning seems unlikely to be the solution. People are just too, too attached to their place and to the perceived values of their assets. And as the events surrounding the Somerset levels demonstrate, in our society, top-down central, cent uh, top central government um, response is driven by short-term political events, leading to policy-making on the hoof in the glare of the media spotlight. What I would say is, um, is required is strategic thinking around planning and delivery, which our system of government has consistently failed to provide. We can fix things in the short term, but I'm much less optimistic about our ability to adapt to the growing environmental risks that confront us. Thank you.